Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Germany once again for the first time in what feels like a good long while. Now, as promised, we are going to kick off with a little mini-series of German and Belgian beers over the next little while. And these are just from my order that I got from Beers of Europe. I managed to get a hold of some really nice stuff that I've wanted to review for quite a wee while actually. So hopefully you guys enjoy this mini-series. But to kick it off, we are going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a couple of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years and they are a very famous German brewery in fact. Uh, but this particular beer is not a style that you would normally associate with them. It is a style that I very much enjoy and apparently it's the first of a few different things they're going to release over the next little while. So exciting times ahead. So hopefully this is another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So um, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head toward Munich in Bavaria in the southern part of Germany. We're going to go a little bit to the north of the city to Kelheim and we're going to have a look at another beer from Weissesblauhaus G. Schneider und Son, although this beer is released under a slightly different name. So this one is released under the name Schneider's Landbrauerei and this is the Schneider's Bayerische Hell. It comes in at 4.9% ABV and as the name suggests, this one is a Bavarian style Hellas Lager beer. So uh, yeah, very, very curious to see what this is going to have in store for us. We've had some awesome uh, Weizens from the Georg Schneider Blauei over the years. So I'm curious to see uh, how they do when it comes to a lager beer. So let's crack on then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website. The link to my other reviews that I've done are from the Schneider Brauerei, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefetch or whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the German beers that I've reviewed for you and that will be added to steadily over the next little while since I have all these nice German beers to work my way through. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about the Schneider Brauerei then. So, um, as I've mentioned to you already, this beer is released under the name Schneider's Landbrauerei, but this company is a subsidiary of the Weisses Brauhaus G. Schneider & Son, who are of course a very famous Weiss beer brewery, originally based in Munich, but now based in a town called Kelheim to the north of the city. But the brewery's beers are very recognisable, normally due to the, the names being Tap 1 to 7, although there is Tap 11 and a Tap X as well. Tap X are usually the kind of barrel aged and experimental ones. But if we go back to the start of the company, it was founded in 1872 by Georg, Georg Schneider Eins, or Georg Schneider I, if we put it into English. But he was the first commoner under King Ludwig II of Bavaria to be granted the right to brew wheat beer. So the company has remained in the possession of the immediate descendants of Georg Schneider since its inception, but in 1944 the Allied bom bombing of Munich destroyed much of the brewing facility that they had in the city, so the decision was taken to move production to their current facility in Kelheim, although the company's business headquarters remains in Munich. But the current brewery, the Weisses Bauhaus zu Kelheim, is actually the oldest wheat beer brewery in Bavaria, and this building has been a brewery since the year 1607, when it was erected by Duke Maximilian I, Duke Maximilian I, when it housed the Kurfürstliches Hofbräuhaus and it's belonged to the Schneiders since 1928. But today the company employs around 100 people and they distribute their beer across Germany and to 27 countries worldwide. Their annual output is apparently in the region of 300,000 hectolitres, which if I'm not mistaken is 30 million litres. So that's pretty damn impressive actually. So uh, yeah, that is all I can really tell you about the Georg Schneider Weisses Brauerei, if I've given it the correct name. I always forget which order the names, uh, the words go in and the names in these German breweries sometimes. But yeah, this is the very first beer I'm trying from them from their uh, Schneider's Landbrauerei range. So this should be quite interesting. Apparently they're going to brew a few different regional styles of beer 
um, from uh, from Germany under this name. So that will be very, very interesting going forward. But probably my favourite beer that I've had from uh, these guys would, of course, be the Aventinas, the uh, Weizenbock. That's just a lovely, lovely beer. The Icebock is supposed to be very nice as well, but that is one that I still need to try and get a look at at some point in the future. But um, yeah, that is all I can tell you about these guys. If you want to learn more about this brewery, you can, of course, check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And if you want to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that they've done, again, check the brewery website or you can have a little look at the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all those different things. But uh, yeah, let's crack on then and actually have a look at this beer itself. I'm very, very curious about this. So. As you can see, the artwork on this one is a little bit different compared to what we've had from them before. There you can see a new kind of symbol compared to the regular uh, Georg Schneider & Son Weisses Blau Wei. Um, but yeah, you can see a nice little bit of a different bottle cap there if the camera will focus on it. There you are. Really nice. I still love this camera, by the way, 4K. And you can also see that the beer on the back, it has the, um, Bavaria, the European Union's protected status. Bayerische beer. There you can see again, Bayerische Hell, um, I don't know, 1928. So yeah, they're kind of basing this one, I guess, uh, this new kind of subsidiary company that they have. Uh, they are using the foundation year of when the Schneiders bought this uh, brewery, the uh, Kurfürstliches Hochbräuhaus in uh, in Kelheim. But yeah, this one is a half litre bottle. Like I said to you, I bought this one from Beers of Europe. I can't remember how much it cost, to be honest with you, but it wasn't all that much. But like we said, this one is a 4.9% Helles Lager. Remember, the definition of a lager beer is a beer that is fermented using bottom fermenting yeast. Usually this is a low temperature fermentation, somewhere between 8 and 12 degrees Celsius. Ales tend to ferment at higher temperatures, about 15 to 18 degrees Celsius normally. So um, yeah, this one, the Bayerische Hell, the Helles Lager. There are a few different variants of this, but a Helles Lager is basically a blonde lager beer. You could compare it to the um, the Czech Svetli, of course, but the, ger the difference between the, the German Helles for me and the Czech Svetli tends to be that the, the, the Czech ones tend to be a little bit more kind of bready and yeasty, whereas the German ones tend to be a little bit more kind of crisp and dry, if you like, but both very, very nice styles of beer and very, very similar. But um, yeah, very nicely presented beer, this one. I always like the top labels that you get on these German beers. There you can see, Bio Schehel, Anno 1928. So yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm very, very curious to see what this is gonna have in store for us. So I'm going to be a bit careful with the bottle cap on this one because I do want to keep this. But there we are. And we've got my nice Pilsner Urquell mug to put this one into, which I think is uh, appropriate. I do have two tankards here, but I like this Pilsner Urquell one, actually. So this will do the job for our Schneiderweiss or our Schneider's Landbrauerei uh, Lagerbier Helles. So, yeah, this I think will be very... Very nice. So, there we go. Let me just line that up again for you. But uh, yeah, this beer has poured pretty much as you would expect. So before the head disappears on this one, you can see that it's poured with about a two-third finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head. There's one or two big bubbles there sticking on to the top of the surface, but underneath there's a lot of really nice kind of small bubbles there. And you can see there is a bit of a steady stream of carbonation just going up toward the bottom of the head. They're quite big bubbles, in fact, but that's kind of quite common when it comes to these uh, these Helles Lager beers. You will get a steady stream of that. But in terms of colour, as you can see, this one has poured a lovely kind of pale golden straw colour. You can see there is a bit of uh, transparency to this one, but it does have a wee bit of a natural haze to it. And again, that is something to be expected. Now, remember, the colour of your beer depends on, one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining the EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. And any barrel that you that you do or any adjuncts that you put into the beer can, of course, uh, affect the colour of it. But when it comes to German beer, normally we don't really have to care about that because of the, the Reinheitsgebot, the, um, the German purity law. So, yeah, you don't really have to care about that, particularly when it comes to Helles Lager beers, of course. But, um, yeah, this one, of course, will be brewed in accordance with that. Hops 
malt, uh, yeast and water, the main ingredients, but it certainly looks the part of a Hellas Lager beer, this one. We're in no doubt about that. So other than that, I don't think there's really anything that we need to say about the appearance of this beer. I think we can go on and have a little look at the aroma and see what we've got. So let's dive in. Here we go. Yeah. That smells very, very nice. Um, so yeah, as I've mentioned to you um, on the channel before, I'm a huge fan of my traditional uh, German lager beers and the Czech ones, of course, and the Vienna lagers as well. I really, really enjoy these styles of beer. And there's just something about them that is it's just not the same. Uh, you know, you get there's some very good lager breweries um, these days, for example, uh, Hulia Brigley in Skåne in the south of Sweden. These guys do some really, really nice beers. Skåne Slager is one of my favourites out there. Um, and you've also, in, in England, you actually have Don Zoko as well. They do some really, really nice lager beers. And here in Scotland, we have New Barnes Brewery who do some good stuff. But, you know, the German ones, they just smell a little bit different. They've just There's just something about these beers that is so nostalgic for me. I do miss living in Heidelberg and having, you know, really easy access to these styles of beer. They're a bit more kind of special to me living in Scotland and Sweden these days. But this beer, it's beautiful. It gives you everything you want from the aroma. So let's... Um, break this one down for you then and just uh, and just describe the aroma um, and what I will say is that compared to some hellas beers that I've had this one leans towards the kind of bready malty side of things so um, yeah backbone of this beer you get a little touch of, uh, of bread crust coming out of this one absolutely that forms the backbone of the beer potentially a wee bit of a kind of you know cream crackery sort of thing there's a little bit of that going on in this beer but on top of that you've got that lovely soft white bready character in there. There's, I mean, there's got to be some Munich malts in this. It's just so distinctive. The, the Munich malt is such a distinctive aroma and the way the breadiness comes out in this, that soft white bready character, it's just really, really obvious in this one. Um, beautiful smell in beer, absolutely. Um, so yeah, yeah, soft little bit of bread crust, a bit of a kind of Jacob's cream cracker sort of thing. Uh, and then on top of that, you've got a bit more of a kind of proper soft white bready character but then yeah on top of that there are maybe a few elements of a kind of biscuity aroma like a McVitie's digestive biscuit there is a wee bit of a sweetness in the middle of the nose there and a wee bit of a more kind of grainy McVitie's digestive sort of thing uh, in there as well uh, other than that there's maybe a very 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 slightly woody kind of thing but yeah this is bread crust bit of cracker white bread and a wee bit of a McVitie's digestive kind of biscuity sort of thing so yeah that's kind of what you're getting out of this one for sure um yeah i think on the malty side of things i really don't think there's much else to report on that to be honest with you um yeah i like that in this beer for sure and it almost just has a little bit of that kind of creamy aroma to it yeah mm, i like that as well you just get a little bit of creaminess out of the malt basin in this one although that's a little bit more reminiscent from what i found that is a little bit more reminiscent of um, the Czech uh, Svetli rather than the, the German or Munich Helles, whatever you want to call it. There are a few different types of Helles beer, of course. Um, you know, you've got the Dortmund Helles as well, which is a little bit more kind of hoppy and bitter uh, than the Ger than the Munich Helles, which is a little bit more kind of malty, in my experience, a bit more malty and bready. So you need to bear that in mind as well. I do have a few Dortmund Helles beers that I'll review for you over the next wee while, of course, as well. But um, yeah. Malty wise, this one hits the spot. On the hoppy side of things, it's everything that you would want as well. So you do have a little bit of that light earthiness in this one. You can smell that. And they are German hops for me. They've got quite a brightness to them, but they're always quite smooth. I mean, there's a few different varieties of noble hops. You've got the Hallertaus, which come from... Uh, from Bavaria, you also have the Tettenangers, which tend to come from Baden-Württemberg, and you know within these regions you've got various different hops. So I think with this one, you're, they're they're probably using the kind of standard, um, Hallertau, you know, Mittelfru hops or something like this. Um, so yeah, this one, for me, it has a really nice kind of bright floral aromaticity to it. Not too pungent, of course, and you know, not dank or anything like that. Just a really nice bright floral aromaticity. But for me, the green component really leans towards the kind of grassy side of things. You've got a lovely bright grassiness out of this beer. And it's a little bit like a wet, freshly cut grass kind of vibe, but it does have just a wee touch of, uh, of zestiness to it. But yeah, the green component for me is really nice. A little bit of smooth earthiness, nice little bit of floral character, and then a very bright, um, a really nice bright 
uh, grassiness to this one. So everything that you would want. On the fruity side of things, again, it's, it's just what you would expect. So at the front of the nose, you can definitely pick out, it's actually got a wee bit of sweetness there. I think the more that you, you smell this beer, the sweeter the biscuity character becomes and it almost develops like a wee touch of a kind of uh, butterscotch Werther's Original type uh, type sort of thing. So I can feel this beer getting sweeter and sweeter the more that I smell of it. But on the fruity side of things, I mean, um, it's very, very light. There's a little bit of a, a very slight kind of peary note to it, a little bit of a light apricot character and you could maybe say there's a wee bit of like a a kind of fresh apple sort of thing you know these are common things that you can pick up uh, from the the hellas lager beer so yeah wee bit of pear wee tiny touch of apricot something like that and then a wee bit of a, an apple character but overall um this beer i think um does go together very nicely and it gives you everything that you would want from this style and as you know if you've watched any of my reviews of these um you know traditional german beers um, for me, I, I, just, I love the authenticity of these. Whenever I review this style of beer brewed in another country, I'm always comparing it to uh, the things that you would actually find in Germany, the Czech Republic or Austria or whatever. But yeah, this is a lovely, lovely smelling Hellas beer, this one. So as I always say, take a wee bit of time to ponder over the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I think uh, it's about time that we try this one then. So this one is the Bayerische Hell, a 4.9% Munich Hellas Lager beer from uh, Schneider's Landbrauerei, a subsidiary of the Georg Schneider und Sohn Weisses, uh, the Weisse Beer Brauerei, or however you actually name this company, uh, from Kelheim, just to the north of Munich in Bavaria, in the south of Germany. Yeah, awesome to review this one for you. Let's get stuck in. Slange, Skoll, cheers, Prost. Oh yeah, that's pretty nice. That is pretty damn good actually. Now, first impression of this one is, it's a very light, very smooth, and actually it's and actually quite sweet. Um, Hellas Lager, this one, compared to some of the other ones that I remember this one, does come across just a little bit sweeter than some of the other ones and of course the beers that you're going to compare this to would be like the Tegenzeer Hell, you know, Paulana Helles, uh, the uh, Augustiner, you know, the Augustiner Helles Lager beer, that's the big one of course, that's the one that everybody loves. You're going to compare it to these uh, and this one I think is pretty solid actually. Um, really interesting take on the style but for me definitely a wee bit kind of sweeter than some of the other examples that I've had from uh, of this style actually so it's, it's an interesting proposition this but it does get a thumbs up from me and um, that's what i like about trying all of these different beers from uh, from across germany you get so many different examples of these styles that you notice little nuances and stuff but i think this is a very nicely done hellas lager beer and when it comes to schneiderweiss and um, you're not going to expect if they're going to have a go at lager beers you're not going to expect them to put out anything that's substandard of course uh, this is pretty damn nice so i look forward to seeing what else they release in this range, I have to see. Maybe they'll do some Dunkels or some Doppelbox or something like that, actually. But uh, yeah, this is a really nice one. A nice, smooth and quite sweet um, Hellas Lager beer. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. Where do we start with this beer then? Let's break it down. And describe the flavour for you a wee bit. Um, this is one of the ones where you know the flavour really you pick up in the aroma transcribes quite well into the flavour. Although I would say that it's, it's a good wee bit sweeter than I uh, than I thought it was going to be. So let's focus on the middle third of your palate then. So middle third of your palate, you can feel there's a wee smattering of a kind of bread crusty note that forms the backbone of the beer. There's a little bit of um, there's a little bit of a kind of um, cream cracker sort of note to it then on top of that you get that lovely kind of smooth white ready character and the white ready notes that you get out of this um, they do actually have a little bit of creaminess to them and that does lean a little bit toward the Czech Svetli sort of style nowhere near uh, as big of course because the Czech um, Svetlis tend to be quite hazy and there's a lot more yeasty character in them as well but this one certainly does have quite a nice bready sweetness to it so sitting on top of that uh, bready layer for me, um, you do get this 
just the, the sort of top layer of the bread is a little bit wet and it just almost feels a little bit creamy in fact so yeah I think that's very interesting with this beer for sure but in fairness the more that you drink of this beer I think it does develop a little bit more uh, crispness actually so that's very interesting as well I think um, yeah so on um, on that note I think on top of the, the kind of wetter layer of the white bread you do get a little bit of a circle right in the middle of your palate so you can feel it's a little bit of a kind of Werther's original butter candy butterscotchy sort of thing so you can feel that little circle in the middle of your palate but um, it kind of concentrates in the very dead centre of your palate that's the alcohol of course for the beer but then as you move further out from the centre of your palate you get a wee bit more of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity kind of grainy sort of thing with this one but like I said the kind of butter the, the sweetness of this beer is um is one of the kind of defining characteristics for me it's definitely one of the sweeter Munich Hellas beers that I can remember having had but um, it works it really does work very very well and the smooth the sort of smoothness of the bready character really complements that side of the beer quite nicely and I mean when you think about it, when this brewery are primarily a, a sort of um you know, a vice beer brewery, it kind of makes sense, you know, vice beers in Germany are always very, very smooth and, and kind of creamy in a sense, so it, it kind of makes sense that their Hellas Lager has a little bit of that vibe to it, so yeah, I like that for sure. So yeah, definitely quite a smooth, slightly creamy and kind of sweet Hellas Lager beer for me, but I think that said, that's everything we need to say about the middle third of your palate. Bread crust, a little bit of a Jacob's Cream Cracker, uh, white bread, a little bit of a kind of wetter white bread on top of that. Then you get the kind of Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy sort of thing. Concentrates in the middle, then a wee bit of a McVitie's digestive grainy biscuity sort of thing. Moving out toward uh, the edges of your palate there. But um, yeah, this, this goes together very, very nicely from that perspective for sure. But uh, yeah, let's look at the uh, the back third of your palate then. So border region between middle third and back third of your palate. Again, there you get a little bit of a kind of grainy bread crusty character. It just builds up a little bit. Then the base of that back third of your palate, you've got a wee bit more of a kind of bread crusty. You've got a wee bit more of a kind of bread crusty um, uh, graininess there. So the beer does get a little touch more grainy towards the back of the palate. Remember on the back of your palate this is where you tend to get the more bitter grainy type flavours. But on top of that kind of grainy bread crust you do get a wee bit more of the kind of crackery sort of thing. Then on top of that you get the bready layer and the bready layer is a little bit kind of thicker and more airy in a sense. And then on top of all of that you get a little bit of the kind of yeasty character coming out of the beer. So the yeasty notes for me it just feels like a little bit more of a kind of dense and very slightly uh, grainy bready character so sitting on top of that sweeter bready layer on the back third of your palate you just feel this slightly more dense uh, grainy bready layer there and that of course is your yeasty note in this one so uh, yeah the yeasty qualities in this beer of course are very very smooth and again we've said this is a lager beer by a vice beer brauerei uh, I mean you think this it makes sense it really makes sense that this beer has that level of smoothness and a slight sweetness to it definitely So, um, yeah, the back third of your palate, the back third of your palate in this one um, is really, really nice. But you can feel that the back third of the palate is, the flavour is slightly taller there. So as you come further forward, you can feel the flavour just condenses down a wee bit. And then as you go into the middle third of your palate, the flavour just squashes together, actually. And that's very, very nice in this one. Um, so yeah, malty yeasty side of this beer is very, very nice actually. I really like how this one goes together. It does remind me um, of some of the Czech uh, Svetlis a little bit. This one isn't quite as crisp as some of the, the other Munich Hellas beers I've come across before and it's definitely a wee bit sweeter as well. Uh, but it works. It does work. So let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer then. So back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little touch of earthiness in there, quite a smooth earthiness I would add as well. As you move further forward, the beer develops a little bit of a slightly herbal character, but that doesn't stick around too long. And as you move further forward towards the front corners of the palate, the beer is definitely a little bit more kind of floral and aromatic. So yeah, a nice little bit of a floral aromaticity to it. But again, it's not so kind of spicy or anything like that. But round the front curve of the palate, 
you've got a little bit of a lighter grassiness to the beer. And for me, I would say overall, actually, the green component of this beer is a little bit, you know, kind of wet in characteristic. It is a little bit more of a kind of a kind of wet, freshly cut grass kind of thing you get out of this. There is a wee bit of zestiness to it the further that you go into the aftertaste. But um, yeah, I do like how this one uh, goes about its business from that perspective as well. The green component is really nice. It shows you the brightness that you're going to get off the German Noble hops. Um, but at the same time, the sort of smoothness and wetness of it is in keeping with the slightly creamier and sweeter vibe that you get in the malt base with this beer. So yeah, nothing else we really need to say about the hoppy side of things. Let's go on to the fruity side of the beer. So, front third of your palate then. Uh, border region between front third and middle third of your palate. Again, you get a little bit of a bready build up there, a wee touch of bread crust. Then the base of that, uh, the base of that front third of your palate, you get a nice little bit of bread crust again. There's maybe a wee hint of that, you know, Jacob's cream crackery sort of thing, but there's a nice smooth white bready characteristic to, to this one there as well. So um, yeah, I think that works very very nicely uh, with this beer too and lovely little bit of a smooth um, white bready character there then on top of that you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just uh, roll their way out of the beer so um, yeah the way that this goes together I think again is um, is very very nice so um, yeah the fruity side of the beer then and um, this is again typically what you would what you would typically expect of uh, a Hellas Lager beer. So, at the back of that um, front third of your palate, there is, you know, you get a wee touch of a kind of apricot, you know, out of it. Absolutely. A wee bit of that dried sort of apricot-y uh, kind of thing. Um, and I think the further forward you move, it does gradually, the fruity side of the beer becomes a little bit more oily. So there's a wee touch of a kind of oily, peary sort of thing, maybe a little bit of gooseberry in the front half of that front third of your palate. And you know, you will get a wee touch of like a slightly kind of spicy apple or something um, coming out of the beer as well. So the oily, fruity side of this beer, I think, is, um, is very, very nice. Um, it gives you, you know, the fruity side of this beer is everything you would expect of the style, to be quite honest with you. And this beer, generally speaking, is um, is very nice, but just a smooth, just a slightly smoother and sweeter version of the style compared to what I've had uh, before. But as I said, in keeping with what we would expect, you know, from a, a vice beer brewery trying uh, a sort of Hellas Lager for the first time, that kind of makes sense, actually. So um, yeah, it works. So let's round off this review with a look at the mouthfeel then. So I would say that this beer is quite, um, it's definitely kind of towards the top end of light bodied for me. Yeah, toward the top end of light bodied for me. Carbonation is very, very smooth in this one. But again, that's something I'd expect of the style. But overall, this is quite a, it's one of the more, kind of oily Hellas beers that I think I've come across as well, particularly from the German side. The mouthfeel is a little bit more like a Czech Svetli, as I've, as I've mentioned a few times. In terms of IBUs, I think this is a fairly standard, you know, sort of 20 oh, yeah, IBU so beer, and that makes sense for this one. But uh, yeah, multi side of the beer is quite smooth and sweet, but you've also got um, a really nice, um, you've also got a really nice kind of smoothness to underline the beer as well. It's got a little bit of creaminess to it as well, almost, which I do enjoy. But yeah, nice little bit of sweet, creamy character, um, and it all goes that all goes together very nice. The fruity side of the beer is a little bit more kind of uh, oily and things, um, and yeah, it just suits it. You get a little bit of dried fruity character out of it as well. So um, yeah, I like how this beer goes together. It gets a big thumbs up from me. So certainly, yeah, Schneiderweiss's first attempt at uh, a Hellas beer gets my approval. I really like how this um, how this one goes together. So yeah, this is definitely worth uh, trying if you get the chance. I think they've done a, a very, very good job with this one. So I look forward to seeing what other lager beers they're going to produce over the next little while. So uh, yeah, let's leave it there then. This one was the uh, the Bayerische Hell from Schneider's Landbrauerei, a subsidiary of course of the Georg Schneider and son Weisses Bierbrauerei from Kelheim in Bavaria. 
in the south of Germany. So uh, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from uh, Schneider Weisse and Schneider's Landbrauerei uh, Land as well. And hopefully we can return to these guys at some point fairly soon. So yeah, this one is definitely worth trying. Lovely 4.9% Hellas beer. This one, I love this style, so I'm going to enjoy sharing the rest of this one with my dad. But Slanjut, Skull, cheers, prost, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this German mini-series. Cheers just now. <laughs>